sitting next to me today is a 2023 Porsche Taycan Turbo S Cross Turismo, which is the wagon version of the regular Taycan. And since this is the Turbo S, this is the fastest version of the Taycan. So you get the best of both worlds, speed and storage. And today I'm gonna to be bringing you a review of it. I'm Aiden and you're watching God Next. All right, now let's talk about the front of the Taycan real quick. Of course, you have these LED matrix headlights. They kind of look like claws clawing at you when they're on. You also have this carbon fiber front splitter down here and some air pass-throughs for better aerodynamics. Since this is an electric car, aerodynamics are super, super important. And this has one of the best drag coefficients of any electric car in the industry today. As for the front, you have plenty of space up here to store any luggage or groceries or anything like that. If I can get it to open. Ah, wow, that is a lot smaller than they lead it on to be. Okay, the 2.9 cubic feet of cargo space up here, enough for one carry-on bag or a couple grocery bags. And this is where you fill some of those crucial bodily fluids for the car. This has the widest tires on the Taycan line that you can get, 265s up front and 305s in the back. Um, but yeah, it helps with that 2.7 second zero to 60 that Porsche claims. Right, now let's talk about everything on this side of the Taycan Turbo S. First, starting with these brakes. This one is optioned with the optional carbon ceramic brake, 16.5 inch rotors up front and 10 piston calipers and 16.1 inches in the back with four piston calipers. Absolutely massive brakes for incredible stopping power. You also have these 21 inch rims up front and 20 wins in, in the back. I think they look really cool in the gloss black. In fact, this entire car with its basalt black metallic color is just so cool looking. It also has been specced with its carbon fiber exterior package, which means you get carbon fiber mirrors too, which is just great looking. As for the charge ports on this car, you get two of them. On the left, you have an AC charge port and you open that by sliding your finger over this little ledge right here and it opens the AC charging port. And on the other side, you get a DC charging port. That way you can fast charge the car. But this is good if you're just leaving it in your garage all night or something like that. Door handles are also pretty cool on this car. They kind of tuck away when they're, the car is locked, but once you hit the unlock button, they kind of pop out. They feel like this electric, really high quality door handle. And the mirrors, of course, are, or the windows, of course, are frameless. More carbon fiber body work down here at the side. And since this is the Cross Turismo, instead of leading back into a hatchback style trunk, now you have the wagon rear. On the back of the Taycan Turbo S Cross Turismo, instead of, of course, having that hatchback trunk, now you have this. You have that little button there, that's pretty stealthy looking. But you have 14.3 cubic feet of cargo space back here, plenty of storage spaces, 12 volt socket, and some nets. If you fold down that second row, you get 40 three cubic feet of cargo space, which is pretty decent if you want to store anything big, going on any snow trips or skiing trips or anything like that. You also have this rear valence piece down here made of carbon fiber, which is part of that carbon fiber exterior pack, and this beautiful massive Porsche light bar in the back with the blacked out badges. Whoever spec'd this car, this is the absolute right spec you should get. I think it looks so incredibly good. All right, now on the interior of the Taycan Turbo S Cross Turismo, not much different than a normal Taycan. Of course, this one is super highly optioned. You have leather just about everywhere in this interior. The dashboard is nice and soft all the way to the bottom of the door. This one also has the matte carbon fiber steering wheel on it and the leather is nice. It's good and bulky for grip and the carbon fiber on it just looks great. And you have, of course, your drive mode selector down here, which in the Taycan, you still get a Sport, Sport Plus individual and normal mode, but you also have a range mode, which limits this car's top speed to 60 miles an hour to preserve battery life. The gauge cluster, of course, is super configurable. You can change it to different map screens. You can change it to show your power meters, but it's a very large digital gauge cluster. And you can adjust some things, things like your suspension systems and your ride height using the buttons on the side of the gauge cluster right here. As you can see, the car's actually raising up right now. And then you can also control the brights and everything by clicking the buttons on the left side of the cluster, which is cool. This one, of course, was also specced with the passenger side screen, which allows the passengers to control media controls, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, of course, is standard on this car, but you can, the passenger can control all that stuff from their personal screen. And then the driver, of course, has the center screen where they can view navigation settings, vehicle settings, and things like that. In the center, you have a fourth screen in this car, which is used to control some simpler functions like climate controls and some other small music functions and vehicle functions. To adjust the direction of the climate vents, you don't actually use the climate vents to do that. You don't put your hand on and meddle with it and leave fingerprint marks all over it. No, you do not do that. 
you go into this menu and you select the way you want the air to be going by clicking the menu AC button. It pulls it up in here and you can actually direct the air using the infotainment system, which I think is so funny and over-engineered. It's so cool. It's just like stuff like this that Porsche does that makes these cars so awesome. This one's also specced with a sport chrono package just in case you want to take out your Taycan and put it on the track. And you also have this Porsche design clock up here on the dashboard, which looks really, really good with the interior color layout of this car. Now, there was a bunch of carbon fiber on the outside and on the inside. That is no exception. All over the door and all over the center console on the sides right here. Speaking of the center console, more leather, good size cup holders that carry just about any bottle. And of course, because we're driving a Porsche, we have to drink Essentia when driving this. There's a Porsche crest that's been specced on the center console lid. And in the center console, you're going to have two USB type C's and a 12 volt socket and a wireless charger, just in case you care about that. Red contrast stitching, which is also paired with these red seat belts right here, which I think are pretty cool and add a lot of character to the car. Now the seats are a little stiffer than I'd like. Some other luxury brands out there make a little more comfortable seats, but they are super, super adjustable. You can adjust the bolstering support, thigh support, headrest support, and up, down, front, back. And of course you have an electric steering column that is pretty adjustable though, up and down. Oh, there it goes. I couldn't get that earlier. Up and down support, it's just kind of sticky. Glove box size is pretty good too. It's yeah, it's a decent size for Porsches. Ain't right? nothing to write home about. And as for the door sills, you also have a Tycon badge in carbon fiber in the door sills instead of just having a normal skid plate over there. It's carbon fiber, which of course fits the attitude of this car. Massive moonroof at the top with the suede headliner, which is also pretty nice and luxurious feeling. In the back of the Taycan Turbo S Cross Turismo, actually so much better headroom back here than the normal Taycan. I can't even start to explain it. And your knee room is pretty good. These are nice and leather backed, which is cool. And the seats back here are pretty comfortable though. Cameraman Jason says that the Burmester 3D surround sound system in this car is not as good in the back as it is up front, which is kind of depressing for your rear passengers. But hey, maybe you should have had the money to buy a $175,000 Turbo S. As for climate controls, dual zone climate control back here with heated seats on either side. This entire rear seat actually reminds me of like the Audi S7 or A7 or 7 series, whatever you want to call it. It's like a spitting image of it. As for cup holders and storage, you have this little armrest right here, two cup holders, and there's a little pass through here if you want to place anything in there, which is for those red seat belts and red stitching. And you even have Turbo S embroidered on the headrest. And with this moonroof back here, it's like you're sitting in a planetarium and it's so tinted that the heat isn't really coming through. So if you're a rear passenger, who cares if you can't hear the music right? You get to look at the sky. All right, so driving the Taycan Turbo S Cross Turismo is such a nice experience. Talking, about, let's talk about power numbers. This car makes 616 horsepower and roughly 750 pound-feet of torque with over boost mode and in launch control, it makes 750 horsepower, which is very healthy. Very, 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 very healthy amount for a car that's this small. Zero to 16, about 2.7 seconds claimed by Porsche. In reality, we all know it's like 2.4 if this car is super fast. With these tires, it just grips the road so well. The steering is tight. Even in your comfort and normal mode, it's just so fun to drive. I'm gonna put it in Sport right now. Like I said, you get Sport Plus as well as individual and it becomes even more locked in, more engaging to drive. It's not 911 good, but it is one of the best driving EVs. Actually, it is the best driving EV I've ever been in. I'm not fighting the car to do this. One-handed carving these corners like this with no problems ever. And I'm like ex half accelerating through these bends. And the brakes are just incredible too. Once you really like dive into them, those 10 piston calipers just grind this car to a halt. Porsche's handling from the 911 has trickled into every car that they make, including the Taycan. So even though it's an EV, and I know everybody says they're emotionless, Porsche has still made this car feel like it has a soul and emotion. You still feel like you're driving a Porsche, it just doesn't make any noise. It feels so dialed in. The one problem I find with EVs in general that isn't solved by the Taycan that I wish was is range anxiety. 400 miles is what the, about the Model S does at its max. I would love to see 400 miles of range in the Taycan. 
it would make this car perfect for being an EV because then you could road trip it without being afraid of range and you could drive it fast without worrying about that reducing your range in city and I think that's what this car is missing and it is an extra 150 miles worth of range because it gets about 250 right now at full charge with the range mode on and everything like that. I also really want to compliment the way the batteries are set up on this. You get a large battery and it charges from 5 to 80% on a supercharger in like 15 minutes. Actually, I think Porsche claims 23, but it was a lot faster for us. When we went from 50 to 96%, it did it in 10 to 15 minutes. And it was charging at 100 kilowatts, which is a crazy amount. And most cars take forever to get from 80 to 100, but no, it just blew through that. And then apparently this supports up to a 270 kilowatt charger. I think range anxiety is the biggest reason I can't buy an EV. And there are many reasons for that. There should be a video that has come out or already will be coming out in the future after this video. Whatever it is, we drove a Mach-E and the range anxiety in that video was just terrifying the entire time. And this only gets about 250 miles to a full charge, which is still, you can't make super long road trips with that. So for in-city use, with all its tech and everything like that, the Taycan is an S-tier electric vehicle. It looks so much better than the Teslas. It's so much more unique, and I would just love to have one for in-city driving. But I also love going on road trips because I love driving, and this car really isn't for that. It's more for in-city use. So I think if I were to get a four-door Porsche, it'd probably be a Panamera because I like doing road trips. But for anyone who's looking for a car to drive in the city and has around $200,000 to spare, the Taycan Turbo S Cross Turismo is an amazing vehicle, and I think you should be buying it. Thank you for watching.